Do you ever feel uncomfortable or unconfident in social situations? Like you just feel like you just can't speak your mind or you speak too soft and you just kind of fade away in the background while it seems like everybody else is having a good time. If you've ever felt that way, then pay attention because today Coach Jules, David and I are gonna show you how to overcome that and how to be more charismatic in any situation and how to practice your charisma using a simple exercise that you can do on your own that'll help you speak with passion and with authority and even how to develop a quick wit so you feel like you always know what to say using a very simple improv exercise that you can do at any time, even if no one's around. Welcome to the Attractive Man Podcast, where we help men become better men. In these episodes, you'll discover how to improve your dating and relationships, how to break through your mental limits that are holding you back, and how to move through life with confidence and purpose. I'm your host, Matt Artisan. And today I'm with Jules, Bia, and David Vibe, two of our infield coaches as well as inner game experts at The Attractive Man. And today we're going to talk about charisma and confidence. How can you become more charismatic and confident when you're in isolation? It almost doesn't make sense because I think most people think in terms of confidence and charisma as being out with others. So I want to hear from you guys as far as like what is your experience or were you always confident and charismatic or was it something that you worked on for a long time and then what can guys do to become more charismatic? What helped me a lot was taking improv classes, which you can still do. They have online ones right now. Like if you're in quarantine, you can go on like a house party uh, chat. Even if it's not a class, get a bunch of friends and do improv games. Practice being spontaneous, owning your true self, whatever comes out, not being in your head. You can do that a lot, even with things like, uh, what's it called? Um, Omegle, is that the name? What's Omegle? It's like what chat roulette used to be. It's like, um, you go on this website, omegle.com, and it connects you on video chat with random people. You can actually pick a topic as well, or you could go no topic, probably no topics better for practice, but it will connect you with random people on video chat and you can just practice owning yourself, you know, and just saying whatever you say, especially if a cute girl comes on, which happens sometimes. I feel like any of those random chat sites like chat roulette, you're going to get like 95% perverts. Like, yeah, like dicks, naked fat dudes. What sacrifices are you willing to make for growth? How many will you stare at to become your true self? Actually, it'd be kind of like a comfort zone challenge. I just never wanted to be one of those guys, but hey, maybe it's a way I can step into new tension. David, what about you? Were you always, because you're pretty confident, you're definitely charismatic, very intelligent guy. Were you always that way or was this something you really had to work on? No, definitely not. And especially like, so first of all, I wanted to get back to what you said with uh, people don't understand how charisma can be related to yourself. I have like a very cool story about that. Before I said to my girlfriend that we're going to do this podcast about charisma while you're alone. And she said, oh, so that way you can learn how to be charismatic for yourself, right? (laughs) It was literally like no connection with what is happening with charisma. And for me, it has been like that. Like for a long time, I was smart, intelligent, and I I had just a few friends with whom I connected very, very well. But whenever I was in like, social situations i feel i felt pressured and i felt that i would never know what to say and say the right way and that i would say some uh wrong things and I, it it happened to me like a couple times i remember once i was a kid and we were at a, a gym and it was with parents or something i was very small but i remember this uh like even now and um in uh in so my fr- my primary language is french and uh, the you call uh, a teacher maîtresse And your mom is maman. And I would call the teacher mom, literally. And like everybody laughed. And I remember that. And like from there, I would never just open my mouth in front of people when they were more than two or something like that. And not my friends. So especially talking with girls was not easy in the first place. And uh, that's why actually charisma, like that's where I'm going. Charisma can be built if you work on it by yourself. Um, I think that... Uh, the way you feel when you're talking to people is mostly because it's how you feel inside. 
So let's say me, if I would feel uh, nervous, it's because I had a lot of nervousness inside me. Or if I would feel shitty when talking to people, it's because I had a lot of shit inside me. My mentor, Josiah Price, um, made me try this exercise on one of our boot camps when I was a student of The Attractive Man. He made me talk to a wall as if it was a girl. And I was supposed to talk to her for three minutes and try to, you know, go on a date. And after one minute, I felt like shit. I really felt that I was stupid. I was saying stupid stuff and it just didn't make sense. And then I turned to him and he asked me, so how do you feel? And I said, well, I feel like shit right now. And he said, okay, who made you feel like shit? And I had a, like, I had a breakthrough because I was talking to a wall, right? So the only person that made me feel like shit was me. And that's mostly what happens with our, like all of our students when they feel awkward or they feel weird. It's just, they have that inside them and they just see that all the time. So if you learn how to be charismatic for yourself and love how you present yourself, then you naturally become more charismatic. So before we get into those uh, like exact ways of how to do that, I thought it was good to kind of introduce it that way because that's, that's, that's really the power. Like for me, I have been always talking in foreign languages. I lived in the States, but my primary language is not English. And obviously you are not that fluent. And despite that, I've been able to hold stories with many people just because I loved how I presented myself. This is the work I've done by myself. So yeah, guys, if you were curious about this topic, this is, this is actually the real deal. This is probably the reason why uh, I got good very fast. The other thing too that a lot of guys forget, and this isn't just the getting better with women thing, this is just a life enjoyment thing, it's like self-amusement. Like finding, training your mind to find the things that are silly and funny, because we get, put into this mold that you have to be an adult, you have to grow up and pay your taxes on time and here's the cable bill and that's boring as shit and then people get into this like droning pattern of just being, I, I have to be serious all the time. Like <clears throat> a lot of that inner weirdness or awkwardness or whatever can actually be pretty systemically eliminated when you kind of train your mind to focus on things that are funny, things that are weird, funny details, and you're just in your mind like amusing yourself all the time. Even cracking jokes by yourself. I'm, I'm a super weirdo like that. I'm like here on my own and I will literally tell myself jokes and laugh at them. We can testify. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> even when I'm with people. But like that, that's part of charisma too is having that kind of playfulness and that's not something that you don't that you have a block to or that you don't have or you have it. Everybody has that inherent playfulness and it's kind of tapping into that inner child you, you know, and coming from that place of just like, yeah, I got taxes. Yeah, I got bills. Yeah, I got a job, but I also have fun. And this is also really freaking silly. Just like think about the silliness about going to a cubicle for nine hours a day and then coming home and watching CNN. Like you can find hilarity in that. Like the way that I look at that from my perspective, it's, it's hilarious, right? Because we're in this constant just like routine of going. And when you start breaking, you're kind of like, it's like you have a little ice pick. You're like chipping at that kind of mold, right? That's like, oh, super serious or weird, awkward guy. You chip away at it with these little jokes and kind of ways that you find to amuse yourself. Um, in Medellin, for example, I, I have fun all the time seeing the disproportionately large asses that women get surgery to create here when they're already really good looking and it kind of ruins their body. They look like cartoon characters. It's funny. I'm not saying that to be a dick or like be mean, but it, it's kind of, it's, it's animated. It's funny. I see all the, I, I find all the little details. Like I've trained my mind to look for that. So that, I mean, like, that's why when we're all together, I'm just always like cracking jokes. The thing is, I want to, I want to say an inner game thing is I used to use humor to resist tension. And that's really important because some, sometimes we have students, I have students and they're approaching girls and they're just always smiling and laughing. And I was like, I'm like, why were you like laughing? Like, what did you say that was funny? And it's like nothing. And it, it's like a nervous thing, right? I used to unconsciously do that a lot where it was a nervous thing and it was not authentic. And that's not charisma if you're using the humor to escape tension and to escape having serious or deeper talks. So I want to make that distinction because it's very important. But really training your mind to focus on the funny. Because I, everything always can be looked at in a funny way. Just as it can be looked at in a depressing way or an angry way or anything.
It's just a flavor that you choose. It's cool that you say that because it's exactly where I was going. The best exercises to improve your charisma are actually games. So uh, I think we can get into like what we would do if we were by ourselves and had to improve our social skills. But I had some weird, like really cool games. Uh, when I was um, a student at The Attractive Man, I didn't have the chance to kind of be able to go out every day and every night to practice with people because I was studying and I was also hitting the gym and reading and learning a lot. And, you know, obviously university studies take time. So I understand when people say that they literally don't have time to go out, even if it's most of the time an excuse. But how I uh, used to learn how to never run out of things to say is because I was talking to myself first things. And that's probably how I learned English, by the way. Like I would literally read out what I would see on my screen for myself. I would think out loud. And not only does it help to kind of put your, put your ideas in order, but also it helps you to be more fluent with what you say and judge yourself less because you get used to your own voice. So that's the first thing. So that's not a game per se. It's just... Yeah, just play. Yeah, pl play the creep. Just be, just be with yourself. <laughs> That's it. Second game that I always play is just okay. See yourself uh, taking your breakfast, and you have this uh, glass of uh, water or coffee or orange juice. How about just talking to this glass? And now you would uh, play a small game, which in improv is called uh, word chain association, which is very funny to do. Uh, whatever you would say, you can find a word in a sentence that you say on which you can start another story. So let's say, uh, if I say to, I guess everybody here knows the game. So uh, I would say, um, yeah, this morning I ate oats and bananas and that made me feel super good. And someone can just take the role, which obviously if you're talking alone, you can just keep going and talk about bananas or how you feel good. Oh, that makes me think of... Uh, my trip to Costa Rica when I was at the beach and I felt just super good, right? It's not related, but you can always find topics that are related together. Just keep switching topics, which you can also play if you, you know, you're not that confident enough to just speak accordingly to what you say. You can just Google. Uh, there are plenty of websites. I don't even remember. Uh, random word generators. And depending on the word that comes, you just start talking. That's where these exercises are actually very helpful because if you say something that doesn't make sense but you were talking about something then if you practice the exercise we gave you here and you talk to the glass and you play with those random words then you can literally change the topic of the conversation and nobody will notice or you could just laugh about it as you said. Yeah, right, like it's, it's, it, it's a matter of like how to adapt to the situation which obviously you need, you learn only by practicing. Talk to a glass, talk to a plant. Do things that make you feel stupid so that you see that it's only thoughts. It's only your mind limiting you. Keep proving to yourself that it's all in your head. And that's beautiful because the very fact that it's all in your head also means that you have all the power to change that into a picture that more suits what you want in your life. Hey man, if you want to keep watching this podcast episode, then make sure to check out part two right down below where we talk about how to be more charismatic, how to own who you are and what you say, and how to not care what others think about you, how to not give a shit. So go ahead and click the video down below and I'll see you there. My name is Matt Erdison from The Attractive Man and I'll see you in part two.